Hey, this is Damon with the uh, Black Business Directory with another installment of Conversations, where I get to interview a great and have a chat with one of the great Knoxville entrepreneurs. And on this episode, I am speaking with Tiffany Chandler, and she's the owner of Executive Tax and Financial Services. Tiffany, how are you? I'm doing great. Good to hear. Good to hear. I know it's a busy time of the season for you, but and I'm glad that you were able to carve out a little time to uh to have a chat today. But uh so tell me about your business. Tell me uh about executive tax services <coughs> executive tax and financial services. And a little bit about you, Tiffany. Well, I I'll, I'll start with me first and then uh I guess we'll talk about the business, but um uh, like you mentioned, I'm Tiffany Chandler. I'm from uh, born and raised in in Knoxville, um, and uh, I started my tax career uh, over 20 years ago. Uh, I worked for H and R Block, uh, I think for about 11 consecutive tax seasons, and then I decided I just wanted to try to see if I could do this on my own. You know, so I, I didn't really know all the ins and outs of uh, how to go about doing it. Um, so the first season was kind of rocky, um, and I actually worked out of, a, I guess, a, a friend's office, I'll say, um, in West Knoxville uh, for the first season. And it went well, uh, but then she got sick, and we and I had to relocate. So I decided to come back to the community because I live in East Knoxville, and uh, I found a spot, opened uh, the building. I was on Magnolia. Uh, I stayed down there, I guess, for about five years. And then uh, I decided to uh, move my office to the house. So I currently, that's where I currently operate. Um, and I've been in business for myself now. This is the ninth uh, tax season for me. Oh, wow. Well, congratulations. Congratulations on nine years. Plus, well, nine plus the eleven, right? So, mm -hmm. yeah, wow, wow, good stuff. That's a long time. That's a long time. So, <clears throat> so you've been in business for over nine years. Like, how were those? For I know the first few years are tough um, for most people, but seeing that you had eleven years in the business. Did you find it to be really hard, or was it, or how was that transition uh, going out on your own for you? The the transition uh, was very difficult because it's a whole lot of, I guess, certifications and. You know, it, uh, as far as like you know, when you first start a business, you you gotta have a business license, uh, and that comes with business tax, and it was just a lot of things. Uh, having a storefront like that, I mean, you know, you got utilities and you got all kind of overhead expenses that you know I wasn't necessarily prepared for, and you know, in this industry. You receive the you know bulk of the income during tax season. I I also do bookkeeping, uh, and you know uh, I have some other small businesses um, that I work with. You know, preparing mm -hmm. different sales tax and different things for them. So it's just uh, oh, it was rough. I tell you, when they say start from the bottom, and now we hear it. Uh, <laughs> That that that's what I always say. I mean, it was no go out here, you know, get a loan, spend this money, and and boom, your business is up and going. I I definitely didn't start that way. Um, it was a lot of trial and error, and uh, I'm I'm very gracious and blessed that I'm able to still you know own and operate this business nine years later. Good stuff. Yeah, I, I try to tell people, like, <laughs> and I've done a lot of consulting, but is it's not what you think it is. And there is no books. There are no books on how to, how business works, right? There's these philosophical, oh, you know, it's supposed to be like this, but until you hang your own shingle, 
and start doing it, you know, nobody tells you about a water pipe bursting and now you got a utility bill that's crazy. Or your broken your window got broken out in the front, you know, right. by some kid who threw a rock for no reason, you know. <laughs> and I'll now tell you, you've got a five hundred Yeah. I agree. <laughs> I had a I had an incident one year at my office where uh, something bad happened, and I was, like, totally not prepared or even never in my worst nightmares knew that something like that could happen. It's It was very, um, even even working from home, I mean, it's, it's even more so, you know, something goes wrong, uh, power can go out, and or the Internet goes out, or something like that can kill my whole operation here. So, you know, it's it's a lot involved in, in being a business owner. Uh, I, 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 it, it's just, it's it's a lot. But I enjoy every every bit of tax season. I, I, I love it. I, my whole family has uh, helped me over the years. So it's, uh, now that I'm at home, it's more just me. Uh, but mm-hmm. I've had Every my parents, my my children, my husband, everybody. Uh, so it's it's it definitely took a village to get it up and going, and 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 now you know it it runs pretty smooth. Uh, my son, he uh, he's my IT guy. I have I really people come and they're like, well, you got all this stuff networked in here and everything. How did you know how to do all that? I'm like, I didn't. My son did it for me. <laughs> so it's uh, yeah, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, uh, seriously, but it's so well worth it. And uh, I, I'm I'm very proud to uh, be able to, like I said, still own and operate and business function. It's a blessing. Yeah. No, I mean, it's it's tough. It's tough, but it is. It's yours. At the end of the day, it's yours. And it it's all about your creativity. You know, you could have said, well, I just don't know how to network. I don't know how to do the networking stuff because, you know, I know in taxes you got to have a secured line and those type of things to submit and um, <clears throat> and your connection with the IRS and uh, that those levels of security, you know, so right. you can say, oh, I, I just can't do this. And, and just give up, you know. But the entrepreneurship definitely takes a certain level of toughness, and you got to be cut from a special cloth, I think, to do. That. I I agree. I totally agree with that. It's not because for everybody. Day, yeah, yeah. Oh no, absolutely. People think it's for everybody. Every, I mean, you know, everybody thinks that they can do it. They can, they can do it. I got a text message last night from somebody who said, hey, I'd like, I'm would like. i thinking about opening up a restaurant. What should I do? <laughs> and I gave and them. You shake your head. <laughs> I, I just, I, yeah, that was the first. He literally. <laughs> exactly. That was the first thing I did was, oh, uh, okay. Then the second thing I did was I just said, hey, First off, you need to figure out how much it costs to open up a restaurant. And then they went into all this other noise, and then they said, well, tell me what I need to do. For... I was like, I just told you. Period. If you can't tell me what it takes to do it, then you can't do it. You don't even yeah. know where to go because you don't even know you haven't done the research. Right. You, and, I mean, that, done the that is a huge part of it. I just – um, shared this experience with uh, one of my clients last week and how, the, like I said, the first year, the first two years were really rough because I had to relocate that second season. But that, I, I mean, just something as simple as me being able to get my payment from the client, I, I did not know that you legally cannot take money from somebody's uh taxes without having a like a third party involved and I, I did not know that <laughs> so that was something you know ignorance on my part to think oh I'm going to start this business and 
boom, I could just put something down on the bottom of the, because I know, I mean, my credentials always go on the bottom of the returns when I was at H&R Block, but I, I had no idea that it was like a, so you have, a, you have to have a software, you have to partner with the bank. It's like a lot behind it. You have to have certain credentials from the IRS to even qualify to be a, a certified tax preparer. So, it, 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 I mean, it, the, 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 the research and just, the I guess the the I call it the need to knows and you know it, it was it was something else and I'm still learning you know I, I learn every year uh, different things um, this year is like one of the most interesting tax seasons that I've seen in these twenty something years it's uh it's it's a lot to it it's it's not clear cut. And uh, it's a lot of people that have been seeking assistance that uh, that had, you know, I, I say went astray or or started doing it on their own. I've had so many phone calls uh, already, and they haven't even started mm-hmm. accepting the returns yet. So. Yeah, and then you, I mean, here it's it's interesting to hear you say that, like what it took you to go through, and you had been in the business for eleven years. We could, but you had worked for somebody. So there's pieces that were behind the scenes that you never had to worry about. Right. Until they were your responsibility. And so, right. you know, the system was there. You were a plug in that system or a cog in that system. You plugged in, you did your work, you know, things flowed a certain way. But when you go off on your own, you had to be the person that created that system. And right. that, <laughs> you know, and so, uh, and so, for people listening who are thinking, "Man, I, you know, I want to do my own thing," these are things you have to understand, and it takes years, you know, <clears throat> to understand that. Not it just does. one year; it takes multiple years. Right. You know, year one to figure. You know, you lay your groundwork and then, or your foundation, and two and three, you may go, "Man, my foundation is trash." I need right. to, I need to redo everything I've been doing. Then you then later yeah. on. You, oh, go ahead. No, you no, know, I was gonna say sometimes even I mean ten years in the game, you still have to restructure because things change. You know, it's it's uh, one thing I I think um, with being an entrepreneur is that you gotta stay on top of things and 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 really sometimes you have to involve other people. It, it, sometimes even though it's your business, you have to get somebody else to, you know, kind of help you along the road. It, it's it's not a, a one-man show all the time. It's almost nearly impossible to operate a business by yourself, like, and not have some form of assistance. Uh, I mean, I, I, have, I have an assistant uh, that's been with me now for about five years. She has a, a full-time job. Uh, so she only can, you know, she has limited availability. But it's it's two heads are always better than one. It's like certain things, especially this year with all these new rules and different regulations and things. Like I mean, you have to you got to be on top of things. You got to stay up, afloat because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. things are constantly changing. Yeah. So let me ask. Let's let me ask you this: How did COVID? Uh, <clears throat> well, we came into the tax season last year, like, oh, before COVID. So, um, yes, it, yeah, uh, yeah, we, man, how let is, me tell yeah. you, <laughs> with, well, well, let me say this with me working from home and transitioning from having the public storefront, I already had somewhat, um, got my clients on board to be able to just like drop off and, you know, drop off, pick mm-hmm. up, or work via email or, you know, things of that nature. That was already established years ago. So now, or last year when COVID hit, first of all, <laughs> my assistant was exposed uh, at her job, and so she was not able to come to work for like three weeks. So I had all these returns sitting here 
that I'm working on, but I, I mean, it was it was a mess. And then I'm scared to even let people come to the house, you know, because mm-hmm. I mean, it, my office is is a separate entrance, but it was still like I'm like, mm mm, you can't come over here because I don't want to get it. Mm-hmm. So, and on top of that, about it was very close to the deadline. April fifteenth is the normal deadline. Sometimes they move it to the eighteenth. It just depends on how the days filed during the week. They extended tax season, which in my 20-something years, I've never, ever done that. So I was devastated because that meant I had to work an extra three months. <laughs> and I'm just yeah, like, I cannot year. believe this. So July 15th was the deadline. Well, then you still have your normal people that normally get an extension through October. So we literally worked tax season all last year. Like it was, uh, we were so glad when October was over because it was just, it was long and drawn out. It was, it was, it was very difficult. And then, you know, um, this year I, I predict that they're going to extend it again uh, because COVID is still here. And uh, mm-hmm. they're functioning, the IRS is functioning, but not at 100% like they should. And so another thing that it, that it affected was anybody that had to do anything that was not electronic, like say an amendment or they, for some reason, their return wouldn't transmit electronically and they had to mail it. Those people still, it's been a whole year <laughs> for some of them, and they still haven't gotten a response. So it was something wow. else. COVID definitely affected my business big time, big time. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I do remember that. And then it's 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 still affecting it. It, It's still affecting it because normally I would, I mean, and I've already transmitted multiple returns for this year, but none of them have been accepted yet. And they are predicting that they will start accepting on Friday. So we'll see. <laughs> so therefore, that's going to push most of my clients are, are eligible for like earned income credit or child tax credit or some form of credit um, this this early part of the season. And those people will not probably get their refunds until the second week of March. So, yeah, <laughs> COVID is something else. Wow. Well. You, you, you've been around for a long time, and I'm sure you can you can handle it. So now, do you come from a family of entrepreneurs? What I made you – oh, so what made you jump out there and, and just do it on your own? When I was coming up – well, I'm, I'm a, I guess I shouldn't say I do not because my father uh, was also an entrepreneur, but – His was more like side hustles. It wasn't like he just had a business. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. My mom and dad both always worked when I was young. I I remember them working two jobs. They always worked two jobs Um, each, you know. And so it was like Mm -hmm. um, the work ethic was always in It was instilled in me at a very young age. My mom had office jobs, and so I knew I, that was one, as I was getting, you know, teenage years, I'm like, I need me, I need to get a job, I want to get a job, I need an office job, and she was like, you're not going to be able to get no office job as a teenager, so I'm like, well, I need to do something, <laughs> so <laughs> I knew I wanted, that was one of the things, I was like, I don't know what I want to do, but I just want my own office, so <laughs> I, um, as I, 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 my first job ever I was a uh, courtesy clerk at a, at a grocery store, Winn Dixie. We don't even have those here anymore. And uh, I did that all throughout high school. And then I moved up to a cashier. And um, so after that, you know, I decided I, I don't really want that. I want an office job. I'm going to keep searching, keep seeking. So I did several different. I mean, I've had so many different jobs over the years. Um, but just the whole I was very familiar with the business setting. It was like you said, I just didn't know all the underlying background Mm -hmm. 
processes. I had no idea. I didn't know anything about any of that stuff. So that took research and talking to other people. I knew the tax thing, and I knew that's what I, I I mean, I really have a passion for it, and I, I knew I wanted to continue to do that. I just didn't really, I was really scared, to be honest, to try to do it on my own because I didn't know. I just didn't know enough about it to, you know, do that. But um, I guess five of the 11 years that I worked at Asian Block, I was a office manager. So I, I, I learned a little bit about, you know, managing the staff and scheduling and, you know, things like that. But I didn't know anything about payroll. Uh, I, it, it was so many things I didn't know. Um, mm-hmm. So, and like I said, I'm still learning. I mean, I'm, I don't know everything. Uh, it's, it's this the whole tax thing is intriguing for me because every single person's situation is different. Every single person. Just because you and I both worked one job all year and have one W-2 doesn't mean our tax situation is the same. So, mm. you know, it's uh, it's just something that I, 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 I told one of my clients yesterday, and we're like, oh, um, you hadn't sent out your email yet, so I didn't know if you were still doing taxes. I said, I'm going to do taxes to the day I die. <laughs> I said, and if I'm not doing it, then somebody in my family going to be doing it because it's, this is my business I've created, and I don't plan on it going anywhere. And it is something you can do till you die, right? until yes, your sir. brain is no longer any not sharp or, or any good, you know. You can right. <laughs> you can always um, work in the office. <laughs> yep. And still, and then get clients. Actually, you just yep. don't have to do the work. Right. So, you know, I, I agree. Agree. And your local, homegrown, in the neighborhood, <clears throat> you know, on the east side of town, serving your community, hiring people, you know, so. Yeah. Uh, that's yeah. that's interesting. You've always known that you were going to do, you know, a certain level of work. Right. You know, office, not hard work, but office work, you know. Uh, no, you don't don't, don't say it's not hard. Don't, don't say it's not don't, hard. <laughs> that's why I said office. <laughs> that's why I changed Oh, man, I tell you. Office. It's very, it's very it. mental. It's very mental, mm-hmm. and it's – um. You know, I I I don't want to disclose how many clients I have, but I have a lot. So it's uh, you're dealing with so many personalities, uh, and and the the one of the biggest things that I guess I strive to do is I want every client to feel like they're the only client. They know I have a lot of other clients, but when I'm dealing with them, they don't care about everybody else. And so that's the relationship, that's the rapport I have. And it's uh, it would take you to actually work in my office to see how everything functions. Anybody that I have working, they're just like, man, your clients, they just love you. They, you know, they they don't want to talk. When I had my public office, I always had a receptionist at the front desk, and they would come in my office and say such, such on the phone. I'm like, do they want to book an appointment? And they'd be like, they just want to talk to you. <laughs> so then I get on the phone, and I'm like, hey, how you doing? And they were like, I need to get an appointment. I oh, thought you could have got told the receptionist that. <laughs> but they, it, it, you know, it's just, it's just something that, uh, you know, I don't know. I take pride in it, though. I, I love it. I love all my customers. I love, you know, that they're loyal. I mean, I'm, I'm dealing with some people that I've been working with these whole 20 years. Seriously, and uh, they won't. Mm-hmm. They would not consider going anywhere else. So, you know, I try to make that. That uh, I don't know. It's, it's. I stand behind it. I do. I stand behind my work too. So, and I think they 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 have a sense of comfort with that. Well, obviously, you're you've created. You know, uh, for people listening, especially the the people who want to be entrepreneurs. I don't know if y'all caught that, but she just gave up some real good jewels um, in that she's created an environment where people love her and trust, you know, that they're going to get the right work done and that they are the only person that is important at that moment. Like, at that moment, this person is the only person here. 
So, and you said they've been with you for years, and so that's loyal. So, yep. you, you know, you're able to keep a customer base and then grow that base. So When I send out my client letter every year, I say, greetings, my loyal customers. That's, I mean, because that's what it is. I mean, and I get, I get new business every year, too, um, but it's uh, – I learned a long time ago, new business is great, but your existing customers is who you really want to, you know, target because you need them. That's that's what allows you to function, and that's what allows you to exist. Yep, those are the ones that stay that, – that. existing customers, once you have a customer – you know, <clears throat> people think it's easy to go get new customers. It costs to go get new customers. There's an acquisition cost in going to get new people. You want to add new blood, yes, but you want to also not have any attrition. You don't want any old people leaving. You don't want any any of your real customers leaving, so just adding on to, you know, you may be – I don't know what the national average for turnover in in the tax business, um, but years ago I owned a cleaning company, and the turnover year to year was over 50%. So I knew, like, one of the things we had to focus on was having low turnover. We wanted people to stay year after year. <clears throat> Eventually they're going to leave just by the nature of the cleaning business, but – if we can keep them on the hook for several years, then we beat the average, you know. And so then you just add one or two more versus flipping the whole half of the business over every year. So that's a good point. That's a really good point you, you brought up, really working with the the people that have been with you for the long haul and keeping them and calling them loyal and, you know, showing them significant attention. Oh, so, yes, definitely. Yeah, well, being a business owner in East Knoxville or in Knoxville in general for 10 years, nine years plus, um, <clears throat> what what changes have you seen in the city? Have you seen it change for the good? Have you seen, you know, what it, what is your opinion from back in the day to today? I definitely, uh, I've had a couple of uh, um People reach out to me recently, just this year, uh, with some of the changes that are going on in the city, especially for minority businesses. Um, and uh, it's uh, it's amazing because, I, I, like I mentioned at the beginning, there were no funds available to just go out here and, you know, start up a business. I didn't have, you know, immaculate credit and um, didn't have any business credit, still don't. Uh, so it's um, it was my own funds, you know. I, I so I know that it is some things that are going on now uh, that uh, I, different people have told me about different things. Uh, I spoke with uh, a, a really nice lady at the Knoxville Chamber of Commerce. Had a Zoom meet with her about a month ago. Uh, spoken with people in the uh, mayor's office. Uh, and it's it's just uh, amazing. I think that some of the things that are are getting ready to happen uh, for the small businesses, um, because it's it's uh, it's it's tough. It's tough out here. So you know, this is uh, I, I explained this the other day too. Like a lot of people, especially in the tax uh, business, I'm not I'm not an accountant. I'm not a CPA. Um, just a certified tax professional. So, like I said, most of the income is generated from, say, February through, I'm going to say, May. And then after that, it's, uh, you know, you may have some stragglers that come come along through October, you know, mm -hmm. a couple of returns here and there. But it's uh, it, it, it's lucrative. But it's not for some people. It's just like an extra. They 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 don't. This is my bread and butter. <laughs> so this mm -hmm. is my 
you know, my everything. It's, uh, I don't know. I guess, I guess it's the easiest way I can explain it. Like I had to, and, 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 I, and I'll tell you what, I had to mentally really accept the fact this is my business and it's not a side hustle. <laughs> So it, mm. it and mm-hmm. I, I mentally it it kind of shifted a little bit for me when I came home where, rather than having you know the the storefront on Magnolia, um, mm-hmm. but it nothing has changed. It's still I probably you know have just as many or more customers now. It, it's uh I, but I mentally had to accept the fact that just because I'm at home, it's not. A side hustle. This is my business, and so I put so much into it. My whole family is like, "Oh no, it's tax season. Tax season's coming. Tax season's coming. <laughs> I have to change. Everything has to change, you know, during tax season. But then when it's over, you know, it gets greater later. So it's just the nature of the beast. It's something I've been doing for so long. You know, my mom says all the time. She'll say, "Well." I mean, don't they know, don't they know you? Any, don't they understand? This is nothing new. So I'm like, <laughs> right, it's nothing new. This this is what it is. My best friend, she, oh, man, she always would just be like, I hate tax season. I hate tax season. But, you know, <laughs> I love it. And I, I like I said, I, I don't plan on not doing it. So it's, uh, mm-hmm. it, it, it is what it is. And we, you know. Love Just keep it. on. Love it. Keep it on. Love it. Love it. So let's. Uh, I think this is a good place that we can kind of start wrapping it up. But let's tell the people where they can find you online if they're interested in, um, uh, you know, getting their taxes prepared through you and your company. Or so where Definitely. where can the people find you and how can they contact you? Well, I definitely, if they're on Facebook, um, they can go to facebook.com slash E-T-F-S Knox, K-N-O-X, T-N. That's my Facebook. Uh, I also have a website. Uh, it's uh, www.executivetaxtn.webs, and that's W-E-B-S dot com. Um, so those are the two places, and you can you can go to either of those and book an appointment. My contact phone numbers are there. I can be emailed through either of those, um, and, and that's that's pretty much it. But we love right. to love to to service you if you, if you need help, and even if you you know already filed, if some things coming up. Uh, it's probably going to make some changes to some people that have already filed, and they're going to be needing to do an amendment. So we're we're here, and we're we're ready for that. So definitely hit us up. All right, folks, so you heard that. So if you need to get your taxes amended, you need to get them filed, you want to use a smaller firm and not one of those national franchises, here you go, executive tax and financial service. So... Homegrown person, been here in the community, been doing the business for ever, ever since she was 10 years old. She's been doing the business, so <laughs> she's only 21 now. So that's um, right, that's right. <laughs> uh, but check them out definitely. And so I want to thank you all for listening to the show. Uh, the show is brought to you by our sponsors, and again. This is called Conversations, and we'll be interviewing business owners in Knoxville and uh, some of the sponsors that have helped out with the Knoxville Black Business Directory, uh, supporting black business, and, and that's what we do, and that's what we are. So, again, thank you all for listening to the show.